Okay, so now let, we, let us look at the structure of ATP and what you guys need to know about this ATP, okay? And also why we call ATP as an energy currency. It's not energy, okay? We do learn physics, okay? Uh, we talk about energy. So energy, we call, oh, heat energy, yes. We learn about light energy, sound energy, but we never learn about ATP energy, kind of not? Because ATP is not an energy. ATP actually is an energy currency. It's something like the money. So how, why ATP can act as the energy currency, but not the energy? We are going to look at it later, okay? So, but basically, ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. So this adenosine triphosphate, they are phosphorylated nucleotides. Now, why we call it phosphorylated nucleotides? Because normal nucleotide only has one phosphate group, okay? So normal nucleotide that we use eh, to, eh, uh, for DNA, so they only has one phosphate group. When they have more than one phosphate group, so means that someone have to donate the phosphate group. So that's why we call it as a phosphorylated nucleotide. Phosphorylated means that they already receive phosphate group. Are you clear? Okay, huh? so very simple in this case now. If I have compound A, compound A got the phosphate group. Okay, compound B here do not have phosphate group. So when you transfer the phosphate group from compound A to compound B, so the process is called phosphorylation. Okay, clear? The name of the process is called phosphorylation. Are you clear? The transfer of the phosphate group. So we say that compound A phosphorylate. Compound B. So therefore, B is phosphorylated. Are you clear? Understand, huh? So as long as involved the transfer of the phosphate group, then it's a phosphorylation. Are you clear? It's a phosphorylation. So A, now can you see that? If you transfer the phosphate group from A to B, so that B will gain the phosphate group, so we see that A phosphorylates B. Okay? And B is phosphorylated. So means that this nucleotide originally only had one phosphate group, received two additional phosphate groups. So when they receive two additional phosphate groups, so then this nucleotide is termed as phosphorylated nucleotides. So this phosphorylated nucleotide contains three important parts. So first, you can see that this is the sugar. It's a ribose sugar or called pentose. Pentose basically five carbon. So you can label it here is carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, and carbon five. Can you see that? Carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, and carbon five. So this one is termed as ribose. Okay, so carbon one of the ribose attached to a nitrogenous base. Okay, nitrogenous base or nitrogen base containing base. Okay, so this nitrogen containing base is called adenine. So what is adenosine? Adenosine actually is the adenine together with the ribose. Can you see that? Adenine with the ribose form adenosine. Can you see that? Adenosine, three phosphate groups. So adenosine, triphosphate. So carbon number five attached to the phosphate group. Can you see that carbon number five attached to the phosphate group? So carbon number one attached to the nitrogen containing base or adenine. And then this ribose carbon number five attached to three phosphate group forming adenosine triphosphate. Are you clear? Adenosine triphosphate. And this ATP we term it, again, we give, right? they are energy currency, okay? Energy currency. And we have to know that when the question asks you to, uh, to, to, to describe the component, okay, you have to say that it contain adenine, not organic base only, because organic base can be adenine, can be guanine, can be cytosine, can be thymine. So in this case, specific adenine. 
They also can have pentose sugar. So pentose sugar can be oxyribose or ribose. So in this case, it's ribose. And three, phosphate group, not one, because it is a phosphorylated nucleotide. Okay, so now we're going to explain what is meant by energy currency. So why it is a money, okay, something like money rather than energy. Okay, uh? okay. now let us look at this, why ATP is termed as energy currency. Why ATP is termed as energy currency? Yeah? Money. Why? Okay, why ATP? Okay, now. Before we continue with the ATP, let me show you guys the, this uh, example. Imagine you are a farmer. Okay, imagine you are a farmer. So you have a land. Okay, what well, you want to plant here, let's say you plant carrots. Okay, you plant carrots. Okay, you plant carrots. Okay, so let's say one carrot is $1. Okay, one carrot, you're going to sell it as one dollar. Okay, RM1. Okay, so one day you pass by this bungalow. Okay, on a very nice house. And then you want to buy the house. Okay, so the house, I mean, the owner say that, yeah, you can buy it. Okay, you provided you give me 500,000. Okay, bungalow, very cheap, 500,000 last night. Okay, so it means that you go back and think. If 500,000 means that I need to plant one, a 500,000 uh, uh, carrot. Okay, so now the question here is, what is the question? First question, owner. The owner of the house, they may say that, Hui, you give me 500,000 of the, 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 the carrot, how am I going to eat it? Right? Butter system, okay, you exchange, okay, the, the carrot with the, the, the house. So you see that, okay, 500,000, I plant 500,000 uh, carrots, okay, and then pass it to, okay, I, I, I harvest it ready and pass to uh, the owner of the house. Then owner of the house said, you give me 500,000 uh, uh, stick of carrots, what I'm going to do with this carrot? First, owner said that, I don't want. Okay, what we don't want? I don't want 500k of carrots. Okay, second, for the farmer, what farmer will do? Hey, 500k of the carrots. If 500k of carrots in terms of my plot or plantation, I may do, need to do it a few years. I may take a few years for me to gather enough. 500,000 of the carrots. But the problem here is 500,000 of the carrots, I how are going to keep them? Rotten ready. After a few years, you can see that, okay, a few weeks, then you can see that your carrot rotten already. And this come out with the idea here is, instead of giving, okay, the carrots, okay, to exchange the carrot with the house, then what we're going to do, we actually, Sell the carrot, we gain the money first, right? Can I not? We gain the money. And then we pay this to the owner. So owner also happy, right? I do not need to have, means I have the 500,000 carrots in my house. Can I not? So this is called currency. Can I see that? So in our body, we constantly face the same problem. Are you clear? We constantly face the same problem. Okay, what is the problem? So look at this in our body. In our body system, we constantly face the same problem when we have the exothermic reaction happen and endothermic reaction. Okay, exothermic reaction release energy, okay, net release energy, right? And endothermic reaction require energy. So what will happen, what is the main issue here is between the exothermic and endothermic reaction, the first issue is you may not have the both process happen concurrently. Can I not? So you may sometimes, you may have the exothermic reaction, but no endothermic reaction. What will happen? Exothermic reaction, release energy, 
but no endothermic reaction to absorb the energy, this energy will be wasted as the heat energy. Can I see that? Or sometimes I need to carry out endothermic reaction. For example, I need to build the polypeptide. But look at endothermic reaction. Hey, exothermic reaction haven't started yet. Or they started, but the energy that um, they release is not enough. I need to gather. By the time I gather sufficient energy, what will happen? The energy, some of them will be released as the heat energy. So it means that we need to find something to actually become the intermediates between the exothermic reactions and endothermic reactions. So the main things here is ATP. So ATP is something like money now. Can you see that something like money? Are you clear? Why? Because exothermic reaction is going to release the energy. This energy will be used to make the ATP to become ATP. So it means that it's something like you have extra carrot. You sell the carrot, you get the money. So now I have released the energy. This energy, if I don't capture the energy, this energy will be wasted as the heat energy, correct or not? Are you clear? So we don't want to, to, to waste it and heat energy. So we capture this energy and we some sort of store it in the form of ATP. So it's something like money. So, but now I want to use the money because endothermic reaction require energy. So now hydrolysis of ATP release the energy for the endothermic reactions to take place. So that's why ATP is core energy currency, not the energy. I do, I'm, I'm aware that um, in, some year in year out, students always like to use this term, particularly those from SPM, energy in the form of ATP, which is wrong because ATP is never, never be a, an energy. Energy, you can only measure, you cannot view it, but ATP is a structure, you can view it. You try to imagine, can you see light energy? Cannot, but you can detect the light. Can I see that? Can you, can you see the sound? You cannot see the sound. Right, sound energy, you cannot see it, but you can detect it. But ATP, you can see it. Or not? Are you clear? You can see, you can draw it out. Light energy, how you draw it out? You can't. So because ATP is not an energy, ATP is a money, it's an energy currency. Are you clear? So why ATP is suitable to be a universal energy currency? Question always ask about this. Why ATP? Okay, it's a universal. So first, you can find ATP, you can find ATP in all living organisms. So that's why we call them as a universal. So in humans, in animal, in plant, in bacteria, all of us use the same thing as the energy currency. That's why we call them as a universal. So the first part, universal. Why universal? Because all living organisms are going to use this ATP, okay? And how this ATP, okay, as the uh, energy currency, let us look at this. When you explain it, so second part, ATP, they are small and they are water soluble. So what is thing here? When it's small and water soluble, means that we can transport them within the cells. You try to imagine if they are large, they are not water soluble, you won't be able to transport them within the cells. Are you clear? So therefore, they can be transported within the cells. Now, why we use the word within the cells? Because each cells have to produce their own ATP. Okay, again, each cells have to produce their own ATP. Okay, uh? so you try to imagine that this is my cells. Okay, now my mitochondria may be here. Okay, so but this part, let's say for example, my uh, ribosome is here. Can you see that? So what we're going to do, we need ATP because for uh, protein synthesis, we need ATP. So this ATP, they are small and water soluble. We can transport them to the regions of the cells that require a. ATP, but this ATP cannot be transported out of the cells because we don't have a carrier protein to transport the ATP out of the cells. So highlight the words within the cells. Okay, third point, when we talk about this energy currency, so they are intermediates compound. The 
Okay, intermediate compounds between what? Between energy releasing process. and energy requiring process or ATP requiring process. Okay, how do you explain this? So when we talk about energy releasing process, okay, so you can see that during this energy releasing process, energy is released, can not? Okay, so explanatory. So this energy will be used to form, okay, to phosphorylate the ADP plus inorganic phosphate group. Now, you must put the PI, yeah? okay, not T. T is phosphorus, it's a PI. So inorganic phosphate group to form ATP. Are you clear? So during energy releasing process, okay, for example, oxidation of glucose. So this process actually, we break down the glucose, release the energy. So this energy, we capture them. So we, how we capture them? We capture them, we use this energy to make the ADP react with the PI, the inorganic phosphate group, to form ATP. Are you clear? Okay. And this process is termed as the condensation. Okay, it's termed as condensation process. So it means that water molecule will be removed. Are you clear? Okay, so how about energy requiring process? In the energy requiring process, you can see that ATP now hydrolyzed, hydrolysis of ATP now releasing energy. So this energy can be used for the anabolic reactions, okay, for the energy. Okay, requiring process. Okay, so this energy requiring now, we can change it to the term ATP requiring because we hydrolyze the ATP. So for example, okay, like protein synthesis. Okay, anabolic reactions. So this hydrolysis of the ATP release the energy for the... Uh, process or anabolic process to take place, okay? So right down here, when we break down ATP, we're going to get the ADP plus inorganic phosphate group and release of the energy. So this process release of energy, 30.5 kilozole of energy per mole of the ATP. Are you clear? Okay, so it means that we hydrolyze one mole of ATP, we'll be able to get 30.5 kilozole per mole of energy release. So this energy will be released as a small package. 30.5 kilozole is not like sudden release of the huge energy. With a sudden release of the huge energy, we're going to get burned. Huh? Are you clear? So this energy release package by package. Are you clear? So this energy we call as a small package of energy. Okay? And... Number four, the interconversion of ADP to ATP. Okay, so in this case, the rate is very high, high rate. Are you clear? Very, very high rate. Or we say that high turnover. Are you clear? very high turnover because the process only involves single step, condensation, hydrolysis, hydrolysis, condensation. Are you clear? Okay. If every time we need the energy, we need ATP, we need to start from the glucose. Okay. If you look at these reactions, we do know that, okay, oxidation of glucose, C6, H12O6. Okay. C6, H12O6. Okay. Plus 6O2. Then we get 6 H2O plus six o, uh, CO2 and then plus ATP. Clear not? So it means that if every time we want to start from the scratch, it takes a long, long process to get the ATP. But now we start from ATP to call the ADP, ADP back to the ATP. So this is a single step process, very high turnover. Therefore, we will be able to get the immediate energy 
from the hydrolysis of the ATP. We do not need to wait the glucose slowly, blah, 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 only gets the ATP. Okay, so according to one article, at particular moments, okay, of our body, you can see that, okay, you can see that uh, per day, total mass of ATP that can be produced uh, per day is about 40 kg. Can you see that? How high? One day, uh, total mass of ATP can be produced per day is 40 kg, but at particular moment, Okay, you, if you check the ATP, the mass of ATP is very, very low. Are you clear? If you look at it, okay, the total ATP that can be produced per day, if I don't want to use it at all, are you clear? I don't want to use it at all, let's say, uh, so you are going to have 40 kg per day. But uh, your body mass will increase 40 kg or not per day. We try to imagine that uh, if I don't use the energy, we don't use the ATP at all, we're going to have 40 kg of ATP every day accumulate. Okay, it's something like every day you earn 40 ringgit. You accumulate 40 ringgit tomorrow, another 40 ringgit. Nah? So your body mass will increase. But you won't, right? Because the interconversion is very fast. When you make the ATP, you use it already. So immediately we have to build a new ATP and then we use it. We build and use, build and use. Can you see that? So the interconversion rate is very high. The turnover is very, very high. If no, then what will happen. If you don't have the ATP, the energy release from the catabolic reaction is going to burn you. You're going to overheat. Are you clear? We have to actually capture this energy. So how we capture? We capture this energy in the energy currency, which is ATP. Okay, so figure 5.3 show the involvement of ATP as the energy currency eh, for the ATP requiring reactions. So you can see that catabolic reaction release the energy. So therefore, this energy will be used to make the ADP and uh, inorganic phosphate group to form ATP. And then this ATP hydrolysis of ATP for the anabolic reactions to take place, for example, synthesis of the large carbon compounds such as protein, DNA, and carbohydrates. Okay. Uh? So you look at the structure here, this phosphate group can be hydrolyzed. So when you hydrolyze this water molecule, when you hydrolyze it, it gets the phosphate group removed, energy is released. So this energy can be used for the anabolic reactions. Then we get back ADP. So ADP together with the phosphate group, then release of the water molecule. So right now, here is hydrolysis. This is the condensation. Okay, uh, so we reference the figure 5.2 and 5.2, okay, 5.2, this one, okay, 5.3 and 5.4. They describe how ATP is related to its role as energy currency. Okay, so show you guys the answer. This is how you answer the question in the AC. Okay, so ATP, there are small. Okay, now in this case, I don't put it as a universal, so that's why I, I didn't explain about universal. But if question asks about universal, then you put in, okay? They are found in all living organisms. Okay, huh? so the role in the energy currency, they are small, they are water-soluble, so this character, uh, characteristic allows ATP to be transported within the cell cytoplasm, but they cannot be transported out. ATP molecule act as energy currency and serve as intermediary or intermediate molecule between the energy releasing and ATP requiring reactions in a cell. So when a phosphate group is removed from ATP by the process of hydrolysis, ADP is formed, and it also di diamine 2 eh, because we remove one phosphate group. So it's formed and 30.5 kilos per mole energy is released. So this energy can be eh, is used in the cells for all reactions that require ATP, such as active transport, anabolic reactions, and also the movement, okay? So in the cell's energy releasing reactions, such as oxidation of glucose, are linked to ATP synthesis, okay? So the energy released during the reaction is captured and to phosphorylate the ADP molecules, therefore forming ATP, and it's a condensation process, okay? So how is turnover? Turnover is very high, the rate of interconversions of the ATP, and the ADP is high. So, okay. So, means, means that they have high turn over. Are you clear? High turn over. 
Okay, so these are the answers.